You know, there was never quite a leader quite like Army General George S. Patton. And there probably will never be another one like him. He was larger than life, who probably could have taken on the entire German army himself. Instead, he rallied his men to help him accomplish incredible, under harsh and extreme circumstances, accomplishments that most could never do. And we owe a lot to him, his leadership. We have freedom today because of it. You know, he felt a sense of urgency to acquire the training and knowledge necessary to be the most value to his country. That was very important to him. He showed his men that success on the battlefield was not achieved by sitting around waiting for the enemy to advance, but by being the advancer and moving forward until the objective was achieved. Now, we're going to talk about his leadership style today and how we can apply it to us. But before we get to that, I just want to read a few of his uh, quotes that are my favorite. Number one, a pint of sweat will save a gallon of blood. All right? (laughs) That is so good. A good plan violently executed now is better than a perfect plan next week. Say what you mean and mean what you say. And finally, if everybody's thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking. Hey, this is Greg McAfee, and welcome to The Greg McAfee Show. Now let's get started. Today, we're going to be discussing frontline leadership, bold strategies for success. I want to repeat that. Frontline leadership, bold strategies for success. All right, we're going to talk about 10 things today um, that has to do with George S. Patton, General George S. Patton's leadership style, and we're going to apply it to our business, our lives, our leadership, basically, and uh, see how we compare. All right, number one, he had decisive action. General Patton was known for his decisiveness on the battlefield, his willingness to make rapid decisions, often under extreme pressure, allowed for swift movements and adjustments in strategy, contributing significantly to his leadership success. So my question to you is, how fast are you at making decisions and how confident are you at making them? He had bold strategies. Patton's leadership was marked by the use of bold and innovative strategies. He was not afraid to take risks if he believed they would lead to success. His audacity in planning and execution set him apart from everyone else. So boldness comes from a variety of experiences. I get that. From, from experiences to natural, natural personality traits. And sometimes it's just who we are. But confidence breeds boldness. So the more you do, the more you try, the better you become, the more boldness you will have. Motivational ability. Patton had a unique ability to motivate and inspire his troops. His speeches were legendary. They went down in history as some of the best speeches. And his confidence and fighting spirit was necessary for the challenges of war in that day. So my question to you is how well do you motivate your team? How often do you motivate your team? And how often... And do you inspire them to act and succeed? That's lacking today. I've coached hundreds of different entrepreneurs who run multiple different kind of companies, mostly having to do with home improvement and home services. And we lack the ability to motivate our team. And I get questions like, how 
How do I make them do that? Well, that's the wrong question. How do you become more motivating that makes them do that? That's the right question. Number five is adaptability. Despite his strong personality, he was probably an ENTJ on the Myers-Briggs personality test, but despite his strong personality and firm beliefs, Patton demonstrated a remarkable ability to adapt and strategize on the situation at hand, showing flexibility in the face of changing battlefield dynamics, which were constantly changing. We can't relate to that. Honestly, we cannot relate to that at all. However, what we can relate to is how we run our business. And you may believe you know the way. You may believe you know what you're going to do in your business and how it affects everyone and where you're going to get to and everybody's using you know different metrics today and um, they want to do 100 million in sales. Well, bravo. But for the most part, most of us are never going to see 100 million in sales in our territory and you know in the demographics we are planted in. Um, some of us, if you see a million, you're going to be very successful. If you see two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 50, it depends on where you're at. It truly depends on where you're at and what the climate is, especially in HVAC. Now, and I'm extremely positive about what someone can do, but there's also reality. And most people don't teach reality. What someone does in a certain climate is not what someone else is going to do in a different mild climate. Okay. Now, so if you believe you know your way and where you want to go, but you have mentors, coaches, and a board of advisors who are telling you different things, then you must remain flexible and adapting for you to be willing to adapt is the key to success. I've sat on many boards. I've watched business owners get frustrated when the board disagreed unanimously. The three board members disagreed with the path they were going on and they fought it and they either discontinued the board or they got mad, they got upset. It's ridiculous. You've got to be adaptable. He, General Patton was adaptable. Even with his strong personality, he was adaptable, okay? Number six, focus on speed and aggression. <laughs> I like this. Patton believed in the principles of speed and aggression in military operations. He consistently pushed his armies to move quickly and strike forcefully, a tactic that often caught the enemy off guard and led to numerous victories. So my question I've mentioned this before, the fast eat the slow today. And you are not, and if you're not pushing your team to be faster, you're losing out. So how much pushing do you do? You say, Greg, that's not my style to push. Well, well, you'd be surprised what happens when you positively push people in a direction you want them to go. You lead them by pushing sometimes, okay? You know, John Maxwell said, if you think you're leading um, and you look, turn around and no one's following, you're just taking a walk. But sometimes we have to push. We have to be, um, I don't want to say forceful, but we have to push. We have to nudge. Okay, that's a better word. We have to nudge them along. Get them in the habit of doing it, doing this. Okay, so. Number seven, personal courage. Patton's personal bravery was evident throughout his career. He led from the front. I want you to think about that. He led from the front and was often seen in the thick of action, which earned him the respect and the loyalty of his men. We can't run a business sitting behind a desk all the time. That, that is not going to work. We need to be involved. We, we may not have to be out there in the field, but we better have a, a management team or a leadership team who is. And we, ba we, we may not be um, able to touch everything, nor should we. You know, I often teach, we're employed from the neck up. Quit touching things. 
Uh, but we've got to be seen. We've got to be heard. I send out a, uh, periodically I send out a uh, video text to the entire team, just either updating them, encouraging them, doing something. So I am seen more often. You know, we hold company meetings four times a year. That's not enough. I've got to be seen a little bit more often than four times a year from the entire team who some I never, I rarely see. Okay. So, um, you know, we can't, we can't run a business from sitting behind a desk all the time, or we can't run a business from not coming in all the time. We've got to be involved. It's your business. Get active in it. If you want it to be successful. Number eight, pay attention to detail. Despite his focus on the big picture strategy, Patton also understood the importance of logistics and detailed planning in warfare. And he paid close attention to the supplies. He, he paid close attention to the movement and the morale of his troops. So again, noticing things matter. Be more observant. Pay attention to things. I can walk through my entire building and I can see things that are out of place. I can see things that need moved. I can see trucks parked wrong. I can see... I can notice when tires aren't as in good a shape as they need to be. I'm a stickler on uh, tire uh, tread safety, basically. And I notice those things. You know, how can some people walk right by them and not see that? Well, they're not looking for it. You've got to look for it. You've got to notice things. Noticing things matter. Number nine, innovative training methods. Patton was a proponent of rigorous and realistic training exercises. He believed that preparing his troops through tough training would better equip them for the realities of combat, leading to higher effectiveness in battle. Now, nothing comes easy. I don't know of any successful companies that they say, everything came easy. I didn't have to work too hard. I It, it just... I planted this money tree and it sprouted and money just fell off of it. Running a tight ship is part of our culture. And it's shared during the interview process of hiring someone. We run a tight ship. I run a tight ship. I like things done a certain way. I aim for excellence. If you're not part of excellence, you're probably not going to work out here. So it's shared at, inter at the interview process. And we can't be or stay number one, which we are, McAfee Heating and Air Conditioning, Dayton, Ohio, the Miami Valley area in Ohio. We've been number one since 2016. We can't stay number one taking the easy road. We've got to push hard. We've got to drive. We've got to expect excellence. And also, you know, he trained, he prepared his troops through tough training. We have really some tough exercises. We have some tough role playing where people literally get frustrated and, and sometimes mad. But we know if if you can get through this role playing in here in this in this conference room with with five to six people challenging you. You're going to be great sitting across from the customer or standing across from the customer or the customer standing over your back watching you. If you can get past this role playing, you'll do fine out in the field. Okay. All right. Lastly, number 10, high standards. General Patton had high standards. He set high standards for performance and discipline, both for himself and his soldiers. Patton demanded excellence and did not tolerate mediocrity. Believing the high standards were essential for success, amen and amen. I just like this guy. He gets it and he proved it and he was very successful at what he did. I could talk about this particular number 10 high standards for hours. If you don't demand excellence in your company, if you don't demand a higher standard, You'll be very disappointed and always be mediocre. You decide. I lied. There's actually a number 11. Uh, it's resilience in the face of adversity. Patton 
faced several problems during his career, including controversies and reassignments. However, his resilience and his determination to succeed, regardless of the obstacles, underscored his leadership success and ability to come back stronger and stronger after every setback. I love this guy. The best will outperform the rest. My words. The best will outperform the rest because they overcome the most obstacles. Again, I've never talked to a successful person that didn't have several obstacles to overcome. And the comeback is always stronger than the setback. All right. Patton inspired his men, and in turn, they kept moving forward, and they took Berlin just like he said they would. As we prepare for the growth of our company, we must have a sense of urgency. A sense of urgency means that we're proactive in our communications and our problem solving and our think and our forward thinking and everything else we do. Our attitudes will show who's taking the job serious. It it lines up in what place are you in in your business? He had a sense of urgency to save lives in battle as well as gain the competitive edge as any of us do or should want to do in business. A couple other things. We're almost done. Be focused, laser focused. I like that word, laser focused. It's not just a skill. It's a matter of mission success or failure. Attention to detail. Again, everything matters. And be alert of your surroundings. We must notice things and be proactive. Look for things that need to be done and then make them happen, okay? Now, despite a lot of the negativity about General Patton that you might read or have heard, despite all that negative rumors, mostly rumors, um, he believed in God and he believed in prayer. And he once wrote a chaplain this letter. He said, I'm a strong believer in prayer, There are three ways that men get what they want. By planning, by working, and by praying. He said, any great military operation takes careful planning and thinking. Then you must have well-trained troops to carry it out. That's working. But between the plan and the operation, there's always the unknown that we run into. The unknown spells defeat or victory success or failure. It is the reaction of the actors to the ordeal when it actually comes. And some people call that getting the breaks. I call it God. God has his part or margin in everything. That's where prayer comes in. And I said, wow, (laughs) that was good. Unfortunately, in December uh, 1945, General George S. Patton passed away in his sleep after having a blood clot that paralyzed his body um, and worked uh, its way to his heart, stopping it and ending his life as one of the America's greatest battlefield commanders ever in history. He was only 60 years old. So General Patton... I salute you, sir. Um, What a man. What a story. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Um, And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe below. And you can also support this podcast by rating and reviewing on iTunes or your preferred listening platform. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at The Greg McAfee Show. No spaces, no underscores. Tune in next week. I'll do my best to keep challenging you. I've got some good stuff. I actually put half of it together today. And uh, thanks for listening. As always, carry on. God bless. Make this day the best day because we're not guaranteed tomorrow. Have a good one.